Welcome to our virtual picture book party. My name is Mary and I will be your host today. This year we are offering book parties a couple of times a month. Today we have four different presenters from our Storytime Specialist team and they are each going to talk about five books. They each have about a minute to talk about their books so this is going to move fast. This month our theme is bilingual and wordless books. We have selected a wide variety of titles to share with you. I'm going to have all of our presenters introduce themselves. Please say your name and your position at the library. Amika, please get us started. Hi everyone, I'm Amika and I'm a Storytime Specialist. Hello everyone, I'm Madhavi and I'm a Storytime Specialist. Hi everybody, I'm Michelle and I am a Library Specialist at our Southland branch. Hello everyone, I'm Tina Rodriguez Cullen, a Storytime Specialist. And I'm Mary, an early literacy librarian in the Child and Family Library Services Department. So let's get started. Amika, start us out. Well, it doesn't get more straight up bilingual than Angela Dominguez's, how do you say, como se dice? published by Henry Holt and Company in 2017. This book still shines for me as a great intro into bilingualism with Spanish and English for the very littlest readers to adults who want to learn a few sweet, simple words or phrases. Every spread has the English and exact Spanish equivalent all wrapped up in a new friendship story. The illustrations are big and clear and cute, especially if you like giraffes. You can find this book in the Spanish picture book section if you want the hardback format, or Arapaho Libraries also offers it for checkout in ebook format. We also have more Angela Dominguez books that encourage English Spanish bilingualism. So if you like this one, you won't regret checking out her other stuff too. Wait. Written and illustrated by Antoine Fortis, this book is a nearly wordless book with beautiful, lively illustrations. You will find one word on each page, and it is either wait or hurry, and at the very end, a third word appears. Yes, wait. This book has been published by Roaring Brook Press, an imprint of Macmillan Publications, and will be loved by kids two years and older. Children look at everything with a sense of wonder and excitement. As we grow up, probably in a race with time and schedules, we lose that sense of awe and wonder. A busy mom and a curious child walk through the city to reach the train station. The child is curious and wants to wait on every page, while the mom has to keep them moving so they don't miss the train. Do they catch the train or do they miss the train? but catch something breathtaking and soul lifting. To find out, read, wait. The most beautiful experiences in life are free and are found in simple everyday things around us. We simply have to wait. The Arrival is probably my oldest pick. It was published way back in 2007, but it has been a favorite for many years. At it's both a deeply personal and part of a much larger narrative. This book tells the story of a man who leaves his home country and family to emigrate to an unfamiliar land. His journey is documented with intricate illustrations that perfectly convey the loneliness and frustration of finding yourself in a place where the language, the food, the customs, and even the pets are baffling. As he begins to feel more at home, he learns the stories of his community and the reasons why his neighbors and friends all left their countries of origin. The drawings are spectacular, and the sepia color scheme makes you feel as if you're looking at an old family photo album. This book is truly one to get lost in. The end pages also contain a wonderful gallery of faces, all immigrants, all with their own story, all leaving home in search of a better life. And the author's father is one of them. Sean Tan was inspired to write this book in part by his father's journey from Singapore to Australia. You'll find the arrival in our kids' graphic novel section, and I'd recommend reading it with older ones. 
probably ages seven and up. I See the Sun is a bilingual Hindi English book. Mila tells us about her life in Jaipur, India. We join her as she wakes up, makes lunch, and goes to school. The page that I chose from this book shows a picture as she passes the significant landmark of Hawa Mahel, the Palace of the Winds. Later, she watches the Bollywood movie with her friends. As a person who has grown up in the United States and has never visited India, I enjoyed this glimpse of India through the eyes of a young girl. Readers hear some Hindi words and learn some Indian history, foods, transportation, and music in this urban city. At the end of the book, it includes vocabulary, facts about India, and suggested activities to do with this book. Thanks. Super Torta by Eric Ramos is another book that has both the English and the Spanish narrative on the same page. The sentences are short, the font is big, and it will not feel ponderous to read everything on every page, though you don't have to. If you prefer to read the whole story in one language, it will absolutely resonate as an imaginative story about a sandwich-loving little boy who goes on a field trip to a nuclear power plant where his sandwich falls into a vat of something and transforms into, can you guess? Super torta! I won't give away the ending. Suffice to say, some heroics are involved. Ramos put a lot of himself into this project. The main character's name, Bombo, is Ramos's nickname that his family still calls him. And yes, he was also a torta-loving kid. You can even, even visit some of the real places he illustrates with surrealistic images uh, from this book. He said in an interview that this book is basically a biography of his imagination. Found, written by Jeff Newman and illustrated by Larry Day, this is a wordless picture book published by Simon & Schuster Publications this book will be appreciated by children four years and older. Children and adults learn about life through their experiences, or let me put it this way, many times life teaches us how to be human and helps us make the right decisions. This story is about a girl, Jen, who lost her pet dog, Prudence. One day as it was raining, she was watching outside her window. She saw a small puppy drenched in rain and wandering alone on the street. She brought it home, took care of it, played with it, and got attached to it. As the story progresses, she learns that the little dog's family was looking for it. She spent a restless night with the moral dilemma of whether to keep the dog or return to its owners. She chooses to do the difficult, heart-wrenching, but the right thing. What happened on her way back home? To find out, read Found. The riders of a train in a nameless city are all used to delays on their local line. Their frustrations often spill over into yelling at the driver and general crankiness toward their fellow passengers. One day, someone new boards the Zero Local and uses their commute time to create a thank you note for the driver of the train then repeats the notes for the next several days. The riders are transformed. Instead of ignoring or picking fights with each other, they cluster around this mystery artist to watch a new note emerge. The train driver is also delighted. He starts to save each note by taping them to his wall. The zero local actually becomes a joyful place. When the artist suddenly stops riding the train, the passengers revert back to their bad moods and unfriendly faces. Fights start to break out until one inspired reader decides to show her gratitude. She uses her art to once again transform a dreary commute into a joyful experience. This book is a powerful lesson that while we can't always control our circumstances or experiences, we can certainly control our reaction. All it takes is one person who chooses to be kind.
I have light a candle by Godfrey Nokongolo. This is a bilingual Swahili book about a small boy who has a journey to light a torch to signal the uniting of two territories near Kilimanjaro. The men of the Chega tribe are making a journey to the top of Kilimanjaro and Nagama wants to join them. And his father says he cannot go. On my favorite page, Nagama is cold and alone as he's following his tribe to the top of the mountain. When he was told he was too young to participate, he climbs the mountain and his father says, the future belongs to the children, you Nagama. The author's note says, that his passion is to promote African thought and show the world that the widely known story of Africa is one of despair, but Africa also has a message of hope. Thanks. Sing With Me, Canta Conmigo was written by Jose Luis Orozco, illustrated by Sarah Palacios, and published by Scholastic Press in 2020. This is an English-Spanish bilingual gem of a singing book. No big surprise here, as Orozco is also a children's performer and recording artist. In this book, he takes six classic singing nursery rhymes, and if he doesn't give you the exact same word or phrasing in each language, it's because he worked wonders to keep the rhythms and rhymes intact. The formatting is very easy to follow. The illustrations are sweet. If you ever thought to pick up a Mother Goose-like songbook, you will not regret adding this one to your cart. Ducks is a nearly wordless book written by Deborah Underwood and illustrated by T.L. Macbeth. This book has been published by Henry Holton Company, an imprint of Macmillan Publications. A little duck gets distracted and lost. Now it's on a mission. It must find its family. The pictures are simple yet appealing and the storyline is very interesting and hilarious. The little duck goes on an adventure and every page has a clue on it, which makes the duck and the readers wonder, ducks, are there ducks on the next page? But then the next page gives away the answer, no ducks until finally it finds its family and there is a happy ending. This book is great for kids two and older and offers a lot to talk about, allowing pre-readers to read the pictures and tell that story. Okay, I cheated a little bit and included three books in this particular chat, but the Farmer books are a trilogy. The third installment just came out this summer. These books are another example of a reader not needing any words whatsoever to figure out what is going on. Marla Frazee's illustrations do a wonderful job of conveying what each character is thinking and feeling, even the peripheral ones. A lonely farmer has his life upended when a young clown bounces off of a circus for a train and into his field. Unsure of what to do at first, he slowly takes on a new role as a parent, but when the circus train returns, he knows he has to return the child. In a second book, the farmer finds another unexpected house guest. A monkey has followed him home, and he is quite a bit more boisterous than the farmer's previous guest. So things do not go well as, at first. The monkey has so much energy, and while he tries to be helpful, often his efforts end in a mess. You get the feeling that this time when the circus train returns, the farmer maybe isn't as sad to say goodbye. And in the third book, the farmer visits the circus to visit, see his two friends who have taken many of the lessons he has taught them and applied them to their current life. You see the little clown dressing up as a farmer, the monkey juggling eggs, and the two of them attempting to milk an elephant. And back to my earlier point, the look on the elephant's face is priceless. The happy reunion of the three friends is only made better by an unexpected romance. I won't give away the ending, but I will say that it perfectly wraps up this trio of books, and I really do recommend reading all three. You will find them in ALD's More to Explore section.
Maya and Annie Sunday, Saturday and Sunday by Gwendolyn Zepeda is a bilingual Spanish story that begins with Maya and Annie visiting one another on Saturdays and Sundays. Of course, since I love a mystery, I wondered why Saturdays and Sundays? You won't find the answer until the end, but there are some clues along the way. Each girl shares about their weekends together. Maya and Annie share food and cultural celebrations that tell us about both families. My favorite page shows Maya and Annie celebrating Lunar New Year and eating mooncakes and saying Zin Chao, which means hello in Vietnamese. Maya also tells us that she and Annie sometimes have arguments. This is a simple introduction to begin a discussion with your child about emotions. Have fun reading this colorful book. The Three Billy Goats Buenos, written by Susan Middleton Elia and illustrated by Miguel Ordenes, is bilingual in that it does use both English and Spanish vocabulary, but it is not the 50-50 split we've seen in my other bilingual picks. However, this book is so cleverly done with context and picture clues that whichever first language the reader has, they are, they are encouraged to infer meaning along the way. As an additional help to the native English speaker, there is a glossary at the beginning of the book that gives meanings of the Spanish words found within. This clever adaptation of the Norwegian Billy Goat's Gruff Tale was published in 2020 by G.P. Putnam's sons. Susan Middleton Elia has written several other delightful picture books that incorporate Spanish vocabulary. Some examples that we have in our collection include La Princesa and the Pea, La Madre Goose, and Little Roja Riding Hood. Check them out. Flora and the Flamingo is a wordless picture book by author and artist Molly Idle. This book will be loved by preschoolers, kindergartners, and older kids too. It is a Caldecott Award winner and the illustrations are serene. The facial expressions and the body language beautifully tell the feelings and thoughts of the two main characters. This interactive lift the flap to see how the story progresses book has been published by Chronicle Publications. Flora and the Flamingo strike an unusual friendship through the medium of dance. It takes some time for both to become friends, but then they have a wonderful time together with synchronized dance movements. If you like this book, there are other books in the series, Flora and the Peacocks and Flora and the Penguin. All these books are about my favorite topics, dancing and friendship. What a great wide world there is to explore when you let your imagination take flight. This may be the most surreal book that I've chosen to talk about, but I just couldn't resist it. Dandelion's Dream begins with a dandelion that's about to bloom, but instead of a flower, out pops a tiny lion. Even though he's small, he is ready for adventure, so he promptly leaves his field and sets out to explore the big wide world. He rides a train, he sails the seas, explores a city, and even goes to the movies where the popcorn is bigger than he is. Yoko Tanaka's images all have a dreamlike quality and they tell the story of this brave little lion in joyous and unexpected ways. Candlewood Press published Dandelion's Dream in February of 2020, right as the pandemic was arriving in America. Although it may have been overlooked while we all have more pressing things to think about, I really hope folks give this book some more attention because it is an amazing and beautiful ode to the imagination. Who wants candied hawberries? It's an um, interesting book that talks about our friend who is a peddler of hawberries that are similar to raspberries. 
and they come on a stick. So you can go out and buy them in Beijing. Our hawberry peddler is out on a really cold day. Where are all the children? How will he make the money he needs to buy medicine for his wife? A child with a special padded coat comes to bring several more special children with her. The page that I chose shows the girl who purchased the peddler's last candied hawberry. Where did all the other children go? There were a few surprises and a bit of fun with the peddler. When I checked out this book, I was pleasantly surprised to see only Mandarin until the back of the book where the English was added. There is also a cultural corner and a word expressions included. I enjoyed sharing this book with you. You may have noticed that all of my previous selections have focused on the English and Spanish bilingual books in our collection. That is happening not only because I provide English-Spanish bilingual story times, but also because this combo is one of the largest bilingual collections here at Arapaho Libraries. This last pick also includes mostly English prose with some Spanish language vocabulary, but this very special book does not stop with just English and Spanish. We're invited to explore different cultures and a little vocabulary from all over the world as we meet grandmother's chickens. You'll learn how to cluck and crow in places like Kenya, Japan, India, France, and Mexico, along with some other useful words circling around grandmother's chickens. Chicken Talk Around the World was written by Carol Lexa Schaefer, illustrated by Pierre Morgan, and published by Little Bigfoot earlier this year. Priya Dreams of Marigold and Masala, written and illustrated by Meenal Patel. This book has been published by Beaver's Pond Press and is geared towards ages five to eight. Priya lives in America with her family. Her family has its root, has its roots in Gujarat, India. Priya learns about India through the stories her grandmother tells her, the festivals they celebrate, the traditions they follow, the clothes they wear, the food they eat, and the language they speak at home. She wants to visit India. Her grandmother tells her, India is with us in the things that we do every day. Priya shares everything she learns with her friends at school. And that is the best part of the story. We carry our culture and traditions within us, in our hearts and minds. My favorite line from the book is, sharing India with others is the very best way to carry it with you. This book has been written in English with Hindi words sprinkled throughout. There is a meanings, definitions, and pronunciations section at the end of the book to explain the Hindi words. Young Tortuga has been tasked with bringing supper to his abuela, who has been feeling under the weather. But before he can drop off the tamales, ensalada, and flan, he meets a coyote who would rather have the supper for himself. Is this story starting to sound familiar? That's right. Tortuga in Trouble is a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood with a Southwestern flavor. Little kids will love the new twist on this familiar story and the fact that the story ends with the coyote deprived of a turtle for dinner. There's also the addition of Tortuga's three best friends, Conejo, Culebra, and Iguana, who end up saving the day with a wildly creative idea. Peppered throughout the text are plenty of Spanish words with enough contextual clues that young readers will be able to guess their meaning. But the author also provided a glossary if you'd rather look each word up. This charming story is available as a book CD combo kit and a downloadable ebook or audiobook. Last, I have Japanese myths, legends, and folktales by Yuri Yasuda. As the title suggests, 
This bilingual Japanese and English book has several short, short folk tales that would be great bedtime stories for preschoolers. I chose this book because I enjoy the Asian style storytelling, which includes fantasy, magic, and a lesson to be learned. The advisor for the education of Japan writes, the tales in this book are retold here by Mrs. Yasuda with exquisiteness. I am sure they will be read by Western children with the same delight and thrill as the children in this country. The page here shows the illustration of a badger who could change his form to trick people. The last story is a scripted fairy tale with dialogue and parts for six people. This could be a fun family activity. Enjoy. Mary, you're on mute. I thought I unmuted myself. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to just record that little bit and I will edit it into the after Tina's video. Okay. So just give me one second. <laughs> All right, that's all our titles for this video. Thanks to our panelists for the tough job of choosing just five favorites for this session. To sign up for story times and other programs, visit the virtual events tab at arapaholibraries.org. You can also find more book lists, links to story time videos, activity ideas, and other resources at the zero to five page under Browse the Library. Sign up for our newsletter for regular updates on the latest programs and services. Our theme next month is STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math picture books, and we hope to see you there.